Hey everybody, I'm Eddie Ray and you're watching my YouTube channel. If this is your first time to see my channel, welcome aboard. We do campground reviews, tips and activities while camping. We originate from a community just northeast of Nashville, Tennessee. We visit campgrounds all throughout Tennessee and in other states as well. If you'll continue to view along, I'll show you what this is all about. <music> Today we're at Obie River Campground in Monroe, Tennessee off Del Hollow Lake. If you've heard of Del Hollow Lake, uh, it's, one of the most, it's one of the prettier lakes in Tennessee. It certainly has very clear water, which is great for any type of water sports, scuba diving, fishing, name it, you name it, it's there. Uh, today we're at Camp Sound 97 at Obie River Campground, and this is what it looks like. We have a concrete pad, obviously our truck and camper fit well on the pad, and if you look very closely, uh, this particular site, Site 97, has plenty of room for another vehicle and a boat if you decided to. Now we didn't bring our boat because we felt like the weather may not cooperate, but Del Hollow Lake is a fine lake to be out and do your water sports, whether it be skiing, fishing, scuba diving, what have you. Alright, so immediately upon entering Obie River Park or campground, first thing you see on the right hand side is boat ramp. Uh, obviously this boat ramp goes down to where the marina is and restaurant and put you out on Del Hollow Lake right at the Obie River. Uh, plenty of parking up here as you can see. We've got several boats and trailers parked up here and plenty of spots. I'd say better part of about 30 spots. Now on into the campground there are other spots if you choose to put in down there. If you're a camper or if you're not a camper what have you. After you pass the boat ramp into Obie River you come, you come at the uh, day use picnic area, which is directly across this little cove area. And then where I am is the swimming area. Now, where I'm standing is primarily sand, as you can see here. Uh, and then there's a retaining wall and it gets down to the beach. And that's where these people are out here. The area is perimeter off. There's a depth gauge and it's pretty good size. Now there's a couple of picnic benches you can sit at, there's some grill areas, and there's a playground. There's a pavilion, and outside of the pavilion is a shower spigot and bathrooms for anybody who's out here in that condition. Beyond this playground are some more picnic tables. They're all concrete picnic tables and sitting areas. Uh, again, as you see, a pavilion for any type of event you may want to use or anything of that sort. Now to get into the launch area, there is a launch fee and I expect there's a fee for day use. After you get past the beach area, this puts you into the entrance of the campground here at Obie River Park, directly across from the entrance, restroom area. Uh, but again, here's the guard shack and there are staff on, uh, on duty from 10 to 5-ish or 5.30. But there are staff on duty here works throughout the day who can check you in in the event that you arrive within working hours. If you don't arrive within working hours, you go the following day. So well into the campground area, we're going to start at site one, which is behind me, two, and so on. This is a pretty small loop. It fits all types of trailers from uh, class A motorhomes up to big, very large fifth wheels. Uh, so there's plenty of space in these areas. Of course, within the website, again, uh, it's always good to check to see your site length. Uh, across from me here, this empty site is site 11. Uh, this second empty site is site 10. And it looks like we got a tent site here. We're going to go on down and take a look see what else is around for us. Behind me here is site 3, site 4, site 5, and so on around the bend. Uh, directly across from site 4 is this site here. This particular site here is site 13. With the large beaver motorhome, 
that's site six. The empty site here is seven. And then the site with the toy hauler is site eight. As you make the second loop into the campground, uh, you'll see sites 14. This is 14A, 14B. I'm not sure why they split them that way, but they have. The site here atop this hill crest is 15. This particular site here is 16. And this continues to go around. These sites, again, some of them are better than others, some are more maintained than others, and then, you know, some are tent, are tent sites or some are smaller sites. Behind me here are sites 17, 18, and 19. These are picnic sites. I don't see any room for tent camping. They do have a little fire pit and a burn grill or a cooking grill, but I don't see any space for tent. Of course, there's parking up here at the top. Uh, behind me here, site 21, tent site, site 22, tent site, and then site 23, tent site. Not a lot of these tent sites are occupied. Of course, it is August. Today's weather has been awesome. Uh, but in extreme heat, I'm not a real big tent camper myself. As I continue on, like site from site 29 all the way down or up, shall I say, to the mid 40s, they are two tent sites. You can see them as we travel along behind me. Uh, as you get around to the peninsula of the third loop, we do get into some sites where campers are allowed or permitted, uh, and that starts. Primarily at 39. There's a small break as you can see 39 is behind me uh, And then 40 is the one directly behind me and we're going to approach up to site 41 Across from sites 41 are the tent sites which are pull through These are pretty efficient. They work nice for tent camping uh, You can set up and utilize these as necessary So I'm out in a kind of a lower area in the campground here. And around me, if you look in the background, you see that all of these sites have picnic tables, they have grills, some have burn pits. Well, all of these are sites 48 through, I believe it's 58. So there's 10 of these here. For group camping, if you've got a bunch of people, church group or something of that sort, this would be perfect. It's flat, everything is close together, and you can kind of mingle amongst yourselves in this area. It's kind of away from everything. Um, you have a beautiful view of the water here. If you have watercraft or something of that sort, kayaks, canoes, anything of that nature, those can be placed out there or right here close by. Another important thing to mention about that group camping area is directly behind me, probably 50 or so yards, is a bathhouse. So it looks like a pretty good sized bathhouse. As I would expect with all the bathhouses here, it has the shower, the toilet, the sinks, the water, urinals, whatever you need for bathhouse use. But it's conveniently just right there now as I was talking about under the 111 bridge is the gigantic marina we're gonna go here to the Sunset Dock restaurant take a bite to eat see what they have to offer here also is boat launch there's actually a couple of them and again uh, endless boats looks like they have some kayak rentals I'm sure they do along with pontoon whatever else here at Pier 42 restaurant there's something to be said about ice cream when you come here during the day, daylight hours, even in evening hours like it is now, people are lined up for ice cream. Nobody here now, they're eating dinner, but we've had our ice cream. They're having theirs. So stop by, check out the ice cream place. $5 a scoop, you're ready to go. All right, aside from the Sunset Dock restaurant, uh, they have a store. And in the store, there's tons of clothing, there's fishing gear, there's boating gear, there's anything you may need. Of course, they talk about pontoon rentals, they do jet ski rentals, looks like they have paddle boards, they got kayaks, you name it, they got it here, out here on Del Hollow Lake. So we're going to go in the restaurant, take a bite to eat, see what there is to offer there. Okay, so behind me we have site 59. Let's talk about 59 for just a second. I don't know if this is site I'd want. My for a tent, I wouldn't want to put my camper here. There's no room and there's a good risk of falling. Um, they have a little concrete pad at the end of it, pretty narrow. It's like back your trailer in or whatever you got there and park it and just be careful moving around because there's not a whole lot of space. I would be cautious of this. This site here is site 61. Across from 61 is 60, 62. 63 and 65. 
You got all kind of parking for anything on 63. You can go way on back there. 65 is just a little closer. Now this is not very far in proximity to the uh, boat ramp or boat storage. 67 here and then site 64. So it's a little it's a little dog leg of campsites that are pretty tight. Most of them for tents primarily. There are a couple that you can use for RVs. This is site 68 and this is site 69. This here is site 66 and directly across from 66 is 70. Now at 70 you see boat storage directly behind you this leads to the off-ramp for boat launching and of course you can park your boats here in this area now i told you about 70 71 which is this open area here is a buddy site to 70 so if you got a family member or friends that are camping with you 70 and 71 and 70 are perfect for that this is the view from those all this area here and then further across more view. Let's take a look at the boat ramp. Now this takes us to the boat ramp. There's a couple of lane as they market uh, boat ramp, but uh, you know as well as I do, you start putting lanes at boat ramps, you start having messes, especially if people don't know how to back down. But here's the ramp. Straight down, it goes down pretty deep, pretty quick. It's not very steep, uh, but the water gets deep. So uh, you put in, it's going to drop off and go pretty quick. I don't know what this is, but it's there, so it's nice to look at. Let's go out here on this dock. Perspective of the campground and where I am, I'm out here on this boat launch pad. This is the ramp. On the east side of the ramp is sites 1 through 59. Uh, and then, you can't see, but the bridge going into Birdstown is just beyond that. That's Highway 111. On the other side of 111 bridge is the large marina you'll see. Now, on the west side of the boat ramp, uh, these are sites 60 through 120 some odd is the highest numbers. Uh, of course, you see all this water. This is Dale Hollow Lake and the OB River. Uh, and it's just a real pretty little place. Now, this water is clear. We've been on Barron River. We've been on Old Hickory Lake. We've been on Percy Priest Lake. Uh, and then, of course, we're here on Del Hollow, and we've been on Center Hill. Uh, Del Hollow is probably the cleanest or more clear lake that I've been on. So right next to where the boat launch is and the boat parking are more sites, obviously. 73 here, 74. This is 76. Site 75 right here. Site 77. Now, as we all know, the size of the sites is dictated on the website to pick your site, but uh, these are all very nice sites. Behind me here is site 78. I think we've come to like this one the most. I like the way it's set up. It, it, you know, it curves and you can park out and you've got a whole full pad and then the lake behind you. Uh, this here is site 80. It's a smaller concrete pad. Can't get a big rig in there. This is 81 right here. And I'm not, this one's 83 where the big class A is. This here is site 84. And this gets us rather close to where we are at 97, just across the way. This site here is ours, 97. Uh, but this empty site is 86. And you can see beyond that uh, is a boat parked, and that belongs to these people here at 88. But uh, the water is just deep enough to where you can park your boat there at the water, close to your site, and then make your way to your campsite and leaving your boat in the water, which is a huge luxury. The site is 96, which is a pull through, and uh, it's a nice level pad with plenty of space, and it kind of backs up to ours, but you still have a view of the water, which I like. Behind me here are a couple of buddy sites. This is site 105, 106. Uh, up the hill just a little ways is 107. But you can see uh, you've got a, a Class C RV, and then you pop up side by side. I don't know that they're there together, but in the event that you want to do two people together, that's a perfect buddy site. Again, we're in the high 100s, uh, and then again, we're in the high 100s. You see the 
campers back here, everybody's on these water. Uh, we get up here to sites 110, 111, these are tent sites. They're set up, they have grills, they have a uh, fire pit, and they have picnic tables, and water, no electricity. Uh, but good sites, they're nice and level, they're right on the water and out of the way. Uh, so that makes it work out pretty nicely. And directly across from one of the bathhouses. This is the bathhouse in the 100 high 100 level. I've already checked, but I'm going to take you inside of the bathhouse. Now it's pretty low lighting. They have automatic lights. So you walk in and light goes off. Uh, here are shower stalls. As you can see, there are three. They have a, an initial little room and then you can close and then get into your shower room. And then back on this other end, uh, as there's very little light, uh, you have a couple of urinals. Oh, there's more light, come on. Uh, urinals and stalls. There's a handicapped stall and a regular stall. And then three sinks with a couple of mirrors. So this is pretty nice, uh, just like most all others. Um, nothing different, nothing spectacular, it's just standard for what we've got. As I've talked about in the past, which is a big thing for us, uh, is laundry. We don't want to go home, do our laundry. So a lot of times we do it before we leave, they don't have to worry about it. Bathhouse here in 100, the high 100s has a washing machine and a dryer. Coin operated, of course. Now I've seen the other bathhouses, they resemble this one also, although some may have more uh, laundry facilities or um, bathing facilities, but pretty much they're all the same. Tent sites 113, 114, and 115. As you can see, somebody's got it set up. Again, these are right on the side of the water, so it's beautiful right here. Um, Campsite 116 across from it, campsite 117, and then directly beside 116 is a straight down 118. Uh, not quite much of a pad to park at. It's got a uh, concrete picnic table and not a lot of space, so I don't know if that's one of the best, but it works. As you can see for site 118, this is a tent site. Not a lot of space for a trailer. However, there's plenty of space for a tent. Uh, pretty good size tent if you wanted that. It's got its water uh, and then grill and fire pit along with concrete picnic table. This is tent site 119 here. As you can see, back right in and go to your site. And this is 120 right here. Kind of up on the hill, it overlooks the water and these lower number 100 level sites. With this Class A RV is site 122. Pull up, back into. Directly across from 122 is another bathhouse. It's probably 100 to 150 yards from the other bathhouse, so not real far. Now, there are several other sites on down. This one is 122 here. And I'm not sure what this number is, but directly across from 122. Directly across from 122 is site 123. It's a nice shaded site. Uh, plenty of space for a couple of vehicles. Site 125, site 126, site 128. So several good ones. Now behind site 126 is an amphitheater. I'll give you a view of that. They've got speakers periodically or different things of that sort. You'd probably do it at the amphitheater. We've got a little board and a couple other activities here. Nice little setup here in the woods. This site here is site 127. It's very level back in sight. Plenty of area. And it overlooks, you know, the lake from the back side. See the volleyball court, lake, boat parking. If you've seen my channel before, thank you for hanging with us. Appreciate your subscription if you're a subscriber, and would appreciate it if you'll just share this along, that way we can let other people know. You know, the purpose of doing campground reviews, we found that as we went along and tried to visit different campgrounds and have visited different campgrounds, you don't get to see that bird's eye view. Sure, you can go to Google Earth and look at them from the sky, and you might get to look at some pictures from uh, Google Images or something of that sort, but 
the, uh, the personal touch of showing a campsite, even if it's just a blip for a few seconds, it becomes very beneficial to those who camp regularly. We try to camp five, six, seven, maybe eight times a year, just depending upon what our schedule allows, uh, and then spend no, you know, four to six, even a week, if not a little bit longer, days while we're camping. But these reviews I have found become very beneficial and people seem to like them. So we'll keep doing more and we get to show a few tips, tricks, and activities that we do while at the campgrounds. Okay everyone, we returned home from Dale Hollow Lake at Obie Campground. It was a great visit. Uh, I was referred to this by a friend and co-worker who says that his family lives up in that area and he says Obie's a good place. And indeed it is. So I would refer it to you. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Again, if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Along with subscribing to my channel, I hope you'll share my video to your community and hopes that they will subscribe and enjoy it as well. Uh, continue to follow along with Eddie Ray on YouTube and do as we always try to do, dream big and live for the moment.